My name's Craig, and you're watching Leaf Life Bushcraft. Uh, today I'm just doing another tree ident video. Um, we're going to have a look at the Scotch pine today. So, uh, like normal, I'll get set up and we'll start talking about it. Just before I do, the Scotch pines that I'm talking about, or I'll be showing today, are all part of a woodland. So the silhouette is not quite um, as you would expect it if it was a statue silhouette, say, in the middle of a field somewhere. Um, so there will be just a lot of looking up. So just before I move into position, I just thought I'd give you a shot from afar, um, see what you think. So as you can see, always at least 100 plus foot. You can see this one here. See the distinctive shape of it. That one just there as well. And it gets like that when it slows down, when the growth slows down, it starts to kick branches out like that. But we'll go down, we'll get set up. I'll just, in fact, I'll just take you into the, uh, whoops. And you can see all the foliage and how this little bit of broadleaf forest is. And then we'll take you into the, uh, into the uh, pines. Here we go. So here. And now it feels totally different. Just give you a shot of this monster here. Oops, looking it into the sun. She's at least 120 foot tall. And it just gives you a different feel when you walk from uh, broadleaf woodland into a pine woodland, as you can see. So, if you see all the light scattering through here, if I just swing you around, See how dark that place is there. Uh, I've got to admit, that's a bit of a beach woodland, so it's renowned for being dark, the beach. You see down there how much light is actually hitting the floor. Yet, if I look down here, you can see how much light is hitting the floor. So, anyway, that's enough of me wittering on. I'm going to uh, set up and we'll start talking about the uh, Scotch pine. So, just to give you a little uh, infill of um, these trees, really, the ones that, that I'm in. Um, like I said before, they're in a, they're in a plantation, uh, they're in a commercial woodland, uh, planted for one reason and one reason only really, and that's the timber. Um, and commercial, commercial timber, well, they've got a rotation round about 60 to 120 years. And I know that's a big, uh, you know, big difference really. But obviously, depending on if you're further down south, where the weather's a lot better than it is up north, it's always bloody raining up north. Um, then, you know, down south, you could get away with 60 years. Up north, it's more like 100 years. Um, but yeah, like I said, these trees are getting felled. They'll be getting felled within the next five or six years, I would presume. Um, and there'll be a lot of timber coming off them, um, used for, for paper, pulp, as well as all the other things that I'll, I'll mention later on. Yeah, these, these trees are, are on the way out, basically. Um, and the Forestry Commission has decided not to plant any more uh, conifer. They are letting it go back to natural woodland. So uh, I don't know if they are doing that for monetary reasons or, or what. But yeah, it's going back to uh, broadleaf woodland. So I've been told. Well, the ones round here are anyway, but uh, right. So the Scotch pine then, Pinus sylvestris. Again, I probably got that wrong. Um, other names for it are Scots fir, Angel redwood, Baltic redwood, red deal, 
yellow deal and European turpentine as well. So I'll flash them up because I've probably got them wrong as well. <laughs> Uh, average height is around about 12 to 36 metres. These ones I would definitely say 36 metres plus. Um, and obviously the average, height, uh, the average age of it is between 150 and 300 years. There has been some recorded uh, over in Scandinavia that actually get to about 700 years old. So. I would say these are around about 100, probably a little bit yeah, less, maybe 80. And as you can see by the marks on them, over there, the marks on them, these ones will be coming down soon. So, uh, yeah, it was planted for one reason and one reason only, these ones. These are not natural. So, like I said before, it's got a distinctive, um, let me just get on the other side for that sun. They have got a distinctive silhouette than any other pine. And that's because when they slow down, they start kicking out them big branches at the bottom. And sometimes they go a little bit, how's the word, skew with. These ones being planted in a woodland have decided to go straight and these will be nice timber trees these ones so what I'll do now is I'll flash up the buds, the flowers, the cones and, and everything else like that There you go, there's the, um, there's the pictures. Just to give you like a little uh, heads up on, on the distribution of the Scotch Pine. The Scotch Pine landed in on the southern coast around about 9,000 years ago, um, so pollen records show. And that would have come in, like most of our trees, from uh, north east France. Obviously, the channel was only formed around about 6,000 years ago, so anything, you know, in our country, once the channel was uh, made, that is then classified as native. So, like I say, it was around about 9,000 years ago. It took about 500 years to get up to um, the lakes and the north uh, Pennines, roughly where I am now. Um, and again, it took another 500 years to get up to Scotland. So around about 8,000 years ago, it landed in Scotland. Now this was all at the end of the, the last ice age, 10,000 years ago. So 2,000 years after the last ice age, uh, we had natural growing um, Scotch pine in Scotland. Now as the earth continued to warm up, um, it started to, to 
the Scotch pine started to die off down in down in the south, and it basically continued to do that until around about five and a half thousand years ago, where there was just literally a band of uh, Scotch pine up in Scotland uh, growing naturally. Um, maybe this is where the the common name comes from. Who's to know? Um, but basically, anywhere that you see it growing now, it's rather been brought here or it has been naturalised, e.g. man has brought it to say a park somewhere and it's then managed to, to spread itself about. Um, so theoretically there's no natural growing uh, um, parts of woodland that, that, that are uh, Scots, Scots pine. I mean I know I'm in one now but this is, this is a commercial plantation so it is, it is slightly different. So let's talk about the uses for Scotch pine. There's absolutely loads of uses for Scotch pine. The main ones are telegraph poles, uh, pit props, uh, gate posts, uh, things like that. Like I say, it's a soft wood, so it's been used for furniture, um, loads, loads of different reasons. It's tapped for its resin, and um, turpentine is made out of out of uh, pine pitch or pine resin. Um, and, uh, and you've got like a, a, a load of other products that are used out of it, including, I mean, there's, you can make rope out of the inner bark, you can uh, make dye, oops, I've lost it, you can make a reddish brown dye out of the cones, um, you, you can get tar from um, its, its, its roots as well. Um, now, in bushcraft, um, there's, there's, there's quite a few different um, uses for, for pine. Um, fatwood, that is when the tree's been cut and all the resin and all the turpentine and everything seeps, seeps to the bottom um, of the tree. Um, so in the first, you know, two or three foot there will be fatwood as it's called. And this is just basically um, wood that is, is just crammed with, with resin and turpentine. Um, so there's that. There's also um, these things. These are cracking for the, for the fire for us bushcrafters. And again, they're full of all the resin and the and the sap and everything like that. And they're really good um, little, you know, like I say, just chuck them on the fire uh, and and up they go. Now the thing is with um, pine, it burns really bright. It's not just burns hot. There are hotter. Uh, flames out there, e.g. hawthorn and oak, but it burns really bright. It's got a bright white flame. It's obviously good for signalling or anything like that. If you wanted to put a fire to signal, you know, pine is, pine is definitely your way. It would burn out quick, but it is definitely um, a brighter fire than, uh, than any others, really. And also, the I haven't got one because I need to find one on the floor. Um, but the but the the actual leaf, the whole the whole branch, is good for us as well. Uh, you can make pine needle tea out of it, and you can also use it as a pan scrubber. I mean, we've got a campsite not far from here, and we always come looking in this part of the woodland to see if we can find the head. I'll try and find one later and show you. But they're cracking pan scrubbers. Uh, so yeah, basically what I'm going to do is spin you around now, and we're going to have a uh, look at the folklore of the Scotch pine. So folklore, um, it states somewhere that um, these used to be planted on warriors and chieftains' graves to mark the burial. Um, this is supposedly why you can see one, uh, a group of them together, because one was planted and then the ones that you're probably seeing are the children's children of that. Um, and also the Druids used to use the Druids used to use um, the, the timber from this tree on the fire or at the winter solstice. Now that's basically all I had on my notes from my college notes um, about it was just basically um, that the, 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 the Druids used to use this timber on the bonfire so I basically I looked into it a little bit more basically googled it 
So what I did was, I, like I said, I looked into it a little bit and I managed to pull this um, uh, caption off um, Riki's Druid Ramblings. So I'll flick that up on, uh, on the screen for you now and let you have a read of that. It was also um, renowned for, well, in, in Scottish uh, mythology, that if you burn this, this tree uh, in your house, it will ward off evil spirits and it will actually ward off ghosts and, uh, and evil spirits in your, in, your, in your heart and that. Um, and the only other thing that is mentioned about Scotch pine that it was actually planted by farmers to create a windbreak. Uh, other than that, there isn't that much. And again, I think that would be down to obviously, you know, five and a half thousand years ago, it got wiped out in England um, and it was only really in Scotland. Um, by the 1600s, it had been wiped out of Ireland as well. So. Really, the only place that you can see it here yeah, is is the is the forest up in Scotland. Um, actually, say that's that's naturally though. I mean, saying that there's there's got to be a plantation near you. Like I say, there's got to be a plantation near you. Um, it's pretty much everywhere now. So yeah, the only other thing I know about the Scotch pine is that uh, in North America it was used all the way up until the 1980s, 1990s for a Christmas tree. Um, we've always used the Norway spruce, but uh, you guys obviously uh, like the, uh, the Scotch pine. So anyway, hope that was helpful to you all. If you want to leave your comments and everything below, um, if, you, if there's a certain uh, species of tree that you'd like me to do an ident on them, please PM me, please let me know. Uh, and if there's anything else that I can bring to the table, then, you know, just ask. So, yeah, anyway, that's me signing out and... Uh, Hope to see you again soon. Cheers.